Thank you guys for being here. Um, just a huge win for us today. Um, we, we all knew as a team who Rutgers was. I mean, a lot of people look at their record and think they're just a team that's going to, you know, come and lay down and not play. But if you look at this team, they've been playing everybody tough all year. And they actually remind me a lot of where we've been in the last couple of years, you know, where just fighting and scrapping and playing hard and, you know, maybe not getting the results with the wins, but, but on the right track. So I love what Steve's doing um, at Rutgers. I love how hard they play, and they caused us a lot of problems today. Um, just really proud of my team the last eight minutes of the game. You know, there, that was a time when we could have seen a lot of panic. Um, we could have, you know, really gotten down, and we just hung in there. And that's all I kept trying to tell the guys. It, was, it wasn't looking good. We had some careless turnovers. We couldn't score. Our defense was not as good as it's been, you know, most of the season. We were disjointed defensively. And um, we just got to the huddle. We just kept saying, let's find a way. Let's find a way. Let's find a way. And finally, Gavin, you know, hit that three at the top of the key, which kind of got us going. I thought that was a huge shot. We finally strung some stops together down the stretch. And then, you know, the three threes were, were huge, two by Gavin, one by McIntosh. And, um, you know, making free throws down the stretch, the steal by Vic. Um, we're all we're all just big plays. We, we we had to grind this game out. There's no question about it. We had to dig down really deep and find a way. And really proud of my team for doing that. Um, Coach, there have been some pretty good crowds here this year. <laughs> yeah. A lot of those were for bigger games, Indiana, yeah, yeah. Iowa, and games that weren't. I guess this is sort of a sleepy game for a lot of the second half. The offense wasn't playing good. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe the crowd down the stretch? There? No, I mean the crowd's energy was huge for us. I mean it was. I mean. You guys saw we were, you know, when you don't get anything going in a game and you're playing really hard, you get you get tired, you know, you get fatigued. You're not scoring, you know, you're trying to play. If you're not getting any success, it's hard to get energy. So to get the energy from the crowd was big, especially the last four minutes of the game. I, I, think, I thought it gave our guys another gear defensively to kind of dig down. Our defense was at its best at the end, and I, I thought it was we got more energy, or I, I call it juice. We got more juice. Um, from the energy of the crowd. And, and I've been saying it all year. I'm so happy the way people are supporting this team. That's what I hope for. You know, the guys in my locker room are such great guys. They want to do well so badly. They love wearing this jersey. And to have the support they're getting now means a lot to all of us. And I know it's something we don't take lightly, and it's something maybe that hasn't always been here. But to see it now, hopefully that's something we can continue and continue to make this a really tough place to play. Coach, what did you think of uh, Scotty Lindsay's performance tonight coming back? Yeah, and, uh, I mean, I was proud of Scotty. It's not easy. I mean, really, guys, he didn't work out. He didn't do any exercise for three weeks. So, I mean, you guys, a lot of you guys, I know, have your workout regimens that you do. And uh, you know how you feel when you don't do anything for three weeks. You know, you, you lose conditioning. You lose shape. And so for him, on a couple days' notice, um, to find a way to get out there and give us 24 minutes. I was actually mad at myself at halftime. I looked at the box score, and I, I felt like I played him too long in the first half. I think he played 13 minutes, and he didn't really have much left in the second half. But I thought he gave us a burst of energy there. He got those two buckets uh, in a row there in the first half. And, and he's only going to get better. I mean, he's, his whole thing is every day he's just got to keep working. He's got to get through that soreness. He's got to get through that fatigue and, and get his conditioning back so that hopefully by you know, the end here, we only got two weeks left, so it's hard to say by the end. It is the end. Hopefully we can get him more back to, uh, to being the Scotty that we've had most of the year. Gavin had been in a big shooting slump. Yeah. How important for him and for the team was it that he got those two late? No, it was awesome, and I credit you know, everybody, the assistant coaches, his teammates, everyone loves Gavin. How could you not love Gavin? He's such a great guy, such a, got a great spirit to him. But, you know, when you're struggling, you, you know, Gavin's a guy who wears his emotions on his sleeve. And, you know, we, we need Gavin's energy. We need him playing with joy and smiling. And, you know, so hopefully a game like this where, you know, there, there were no two bigger shots in the game than the two threes he hit, the one at the top and then the corner three um, on, on the kick out. And I'm just proud of him for having the courage to step up there and take him as much as he's been struggling. And uh, I thought he gave us huge minutes tonight. Coach, is this a bit of a different experience for you guys, particularly in a game like this, being the team with the target on your back and knowing coming into games that 
teams like Rutgers are going to be looking at you guys as a team that they want to come in and beat? Yeah, no, I mean, all this stuff is new for all of us, you know, for, for our guys. I mean, we're, we're doing things that haven't been done in a while, and, and, and that's what we're excited about, but it's new. So it's, they are new experiences, and we got to learn how to handle it better. You know, I, I, I think, and our guys will be the first, to, and I don't want to dis- diminish, I thought Rutgers played really well. But, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't defend to the level that we needed to defend to today for 30 minutes. We did at the last eight. And we got to get back to playing our defense. We got to, you know, get back to, to, to being, you know, a, a scrappy blue collar, which we were at the end of the game. And, uh, you know, but what you're saying is true. I mean, people, res- we've earned respect. And that's something that we were, we wanted. I mean, we, we've wanted respect. And it's something we've earned over the last couple of years. People know we're a good team. People are ready to play us. People are determined, and our guys have to, to learn how to deal with that and match it. Chris, you, you made one field goal in the span of 11 minutes yeah. in the second half. You were down for about Don't 14 remind me. <laughs> about 14 <laughs> minutes. You're trailing. What gave this team its ability for that last surge and, and to find a way, as you say? Well, I tried to be really calm. You know, in my demeanor, I'm an emotional guy, so I can, I can get excited and sometimes maybe to a detriment of the team. I tried to be very calm with the guys to keep our composure. You know, I I didn't want us to panic. There was still eight minutes to go, and it was only a six-point game. So even though we were struggling, and we had only had, I think, nine points the first 12 minutes of the half, but had the long drought, we couldn't throw at the ocean. We were having a hard time getting stops. We had some careless turnovers. We just kept saying in the huddle, let's find a way. Let's figure out a way. Let's grind this out. It's eight minutes. Let's get one stop that maybe leads to two stops that, you know, let's just see it go in one time and then we'll be on our way. And I thought we just really leaned on each other. You know, I was leaning on them. They were leaning on me. And, and we just we just had to dig down. And you guys know that you fought. It's a long year. You know, you're not going to play great every night, you know, and, and a lot of times the other team makes you not play great. And Rutgers did that tonight to us. A lot of a lot of our inefficiency and in not playing well was because of them. And we found a way to win, which is what good teams do. And, and I'm really proud of the guys for that. Yes, sir. Coach, um, Derek Pardon, he had seven rebounds in like the first 10 minutes of the game, but he only finished with eight. And ultimately, um, Northwestern was out rebounded by eight in this game. Yeah. Does that present any concern for you? Yeah, well, Rutgers is one of the best rebounding teams in our league. So we knew that coming in the game. I mean, they got 18 offensive rebounds. That's what they do. I think they average 14 a game. So, I mean, that's the one. That's one of their main outside of their guards with Sanders and Johnson and, and Williams and their aggressiveness. The other thing they do really well is rebound. So we knew we were up against it. They're bigger than us. They're physical. You know, and a lot of times we have to what I call gang rebound. We got to be a team rebounding team. And you know, we we got to do a better job of that. There's no question about it. They they hurt us on the offensive boards, and it's something as we continue to move forward these last couple of weeks, we're going to have to shore that up. Uh, you mentioned the, the 18 offensive rebounds. Going down the stretch, uh, that Isaiah rebound uh, in the last couple of minutes, how big was that? And, and yeah. how, how big is it when, when your guards are able to go down and, and help out yeah, with that? Well, we have to. I mean, that's what I mean. Like, we, we have to be, like, we call it gang rebounding. You know, we're certainly Pardon is a guy who's shown, you know, he's had 20 rebounds in a game. But for the most part, we're at our best when Law and Lindsey and Bryant, all those guys, Sanjay, we got we to gotta all dig them out. We can't rely on one or two guys because we are a little bit undersized. And uh, so we have to do it with our heart, with our will. And, um, you know, it's something, it's something that we got to keep concentrating on here as we think because you don't want to give teams extra possessions, especially in these close games. There's a couple things. Yes. How much um, the work Vic is doing defensively, how much is that impacting his offense? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I mean, we're putting him on really good players, and he's chasing me. He guarded Corey Sanders the whole night. And, you know, I thought Corey's a good, you know, but, you know, he had, he took 19 shots to get 17 points and turned it over four times. So I thought we did a good, I thought he did a good job on Corey and he's not an easy cover, but there's no doubt it gets into your legs, you know, and that's why as he continues to get older, a big thing with Vic is going to be to, to get into the kind of shape to be able to play both ends because we, you know, we need him to, to not only be a defensive stopper, but we need it. We need his offense. And, you know, that's something that hopefully with Scotty back, it'll lighten his load offensively a little bit. You know, teams are really loading up on him without Scotty. In that process the guys have gone through from two years ago, hoping to win games like this, to believing they're going to win, how is that manifested within the game itself? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just the experience we've gone through. I mean, uh, there's no other way. You know, you, you, you get to that point by going through, going through tough times, getting angry about it, and then learning how to fight out of it and, and become successful. And... 
you know, that's what this group has done. You know, we've had a lot of games like this, like Rutgers had today, a lot of them in the past. And, you know, we've, uh, we've, we've gotten tough from it. We've gotten better. And we figured out how to win a lot of close games, which is, which is huge to be able to win in this league. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just try to be a so source of strength for the guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I think our guys, we're getting older now, so I think we're not. I thought in the past when, when it wasn't going well, we, we started panicking. We'd take bad shots. Our defense would disintegrate, and, and there would go the game. But we're a little bit more hardened now. We're more experienced. We know it's a long game. We know there's a lot of time left, and, and uh, we, we did those things tonight really well. I think, did he have one in the back? Okay. Coach, how did what happened at the end of the Illinois game contribute to what happened today in terms of your execution and composure? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think every game is kind of its own, you know, I, I mean, our, our inability to take care of the ball in that game was huge. I think we had five turnovers the last three minutes with a three-point lead. We didn't get it. And so you watch, you watch it, you talk about it, you try to explain the game situations, what we're trying to get, and um, you try to be better. But, you know, I, I think every game is kind of its own entity when, when it comes to that. And that night we didn't do it well. Tonight we were able to make the plays and, and, and find a way to win, which was, which was really fun as a coach to see. Thanks, coach. All right, guys, thank you.